What is this thing that we call government? Some people are tempted to snarkily say that it's government, and meant means mind, and so it's mind. No, meant is a suffix. We don't have to resort to silly semantic arguments to look seriously at what government is. What is government? And I, as I say that phrase, I'm tempted to, while well, I have the melody, what is love? In my, I'll stop singing, I promise. But what, what is, what is government? We, we, we use this word over and over again, and it has this massive role in society. I don't think anyone would deny that. And we look at currently the American government or governments around the world, we can point to people and buildings and military equipment and imaginary lines on a map and documents, words on paper or online now. And we can talk about the institution, this concept. Clearly, we're describing something abstract, something more than the sum of its parts. So it's worth asking, what is government? Because we use this term and we debate it so heatedly and I, and I hear people you know I, I hear people in debates all the time using terms talking past each other and if simply clarifying definitions would go a really long way like for example uh, you know when I say Republican I mean, the red flavored wing of the American Socialist Party. When I say Democrat, I mean the blue flavored wing of the American Socialist Party. And people use these terms totally differently. Some people think, well, well Republicans are good people and Democrats are bad people. And they like literally define these categories with those terms some would include because they don't actually define these terms. Another one that I think is relevant to, to today's modern political dialogue is, is the definition of, of socialism, right? And I mean, socialism, let, let's go ahead. I, I didn't have this one pulled up, but let's go ahead and, and look at the, you'll see where I'm going. Let's look at the, the actual uh, Google definition. It's not the de dictionary definition. Who owns dictionaries anymore, right? We're, we're, when we say the dictionary definition, we mean Google now. So you put in socialism to Google. You have a political and economic theory of social organization which, which advocates that the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Wow, CJ's on it. There it is. Boom. The Google definition of socialism. Now, <clears throat> we say, Adam, how, how can you say that, that, that both Republicans and, and Democrats are socialists? Well, I mean, it's, it's more fair to call them Marxists because if you look at the Communist Manifesto, Manifesto by Karl Marx, you look at the 10 planks, we have most of the planks of the Communist Manifesto in effect in America today. Banking, medicine, corporatism, education, and so on and so forth. And these are, these are things that both Democrats and Republicans support. In fact, they will defend social security, which is socialized retirement. We don't call it that because we're against socialism in America, at least rhetorically. So no, we, but they both support these social policies, excuse me, socialist policies where means of production, distribution, exchange are owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Now, regulated, if you say owned by the community as a whole, that's not really fair, right? Who owns the government? It's corporate sponsors, the bankers. They, they really own things. So to say that we have things owned by the community as a whole, only in the illusory sense of like, well, roads and government buildings are public facilities and public parks are owned by the community as a whole, but regulated by the community as a whole. Uh, I mean, if you believe that government is of, by, and for the people, then every government regulation of production, distribution, and exchange that we have today is a form of socialism. But again, it's, it's really, as is always the case with practical socialism, it's an illusion, right? Because I mean, even monarchy, in a sense of monarchy, rule by a monarch, is, is kind of an illusion, too, because you see, does, does an individual monarch ever have absolute authority and the ability to control an entire country, or do they have an oligarchy behind them, right? There's always a, a group of elite, a super class in a society that will try, or well, got that way by controlling, manipulating, and exploiting others. Which brings us right back to government, to the Wikipedia page for government. This is this is really important because the 
word government can kind of be used two ways, right? We, we, can, we can talk about government in the, in the general abstract, like anything that governs, like student body government, like corporate government. But when we talk about governments today, we're, we're talking generally about what, what, what Google, uh, or excuse me, what Wikipedia says here. A government is a system or group of people governing an organized community, often a state, but also other entities like, for example, companies, especially in the case of colonial companies. Uh, kind of a weird twist there from Wikipedia. It's certainly never an unbiased source as much as it, it tries to be, and, and probably better than anything else on the internet serves as a great aggregator of information to understand these things. But in the case of its broad associative definition, government normally consists of legislature, executive, and judiciary. Government is a means by which organizational policies are enforced, as well as a mechanism for determining policy. Now, about that, let's just, this is really critical, a means by which organizational policies are enforced. Now, what if one of those policies is you can't leave the organization. And you're not allowed to leave. We have an organization. We're going to force policies on you, and we're not going to allow you to leave. Well, now it's really kind of a prison, right? I mean, it might be an open-air prison. It might be a big prison. It might be a prison where the, uh, the inmates have a lot of privileges, but you don't have rights. If you don't have the right to leave an organization, you're, you're, you don't have the right to self-determination. You don't have the right to choose. You're being forced to be a part of that organization. So if that's the case, it doesn't really sound like, like an ethical institution, does it, right? Now, in the United States, can you leave? Can you can you leave governments in around the world? Eh, kind of. I mean, at, at some point, the people in charge of governments realize that if you could give your tax cows... Oh, excuse me, am I jumping ahead to tax? Don't worry, we'll get to taxation. But if you had people who were working for you and working enthusiastically if you could, I mean if instead of instead of you know forcing your uh, your tax cows to have specific jobs like in, in in fully regimented centrally planned economies then you know uh, uh, well they're, they're not by, they not work that enthusiastically if you give your tax cows the illusion of choice and and how they work or where they work they're going to be more productive in fact if you make your fences of your of your farm, your tax farm, uh, porous, if, if, if the cows can kind of come and go as they please, they're going to be more likely to wander into the slaughterhouse voluntarily and, and pay those taxes. Now, I'm going to jump ahead again on another point here, right? Because a lot of people go, well, Adam, if government is wrong, then then we must be anarchists, right? You know, we, we, we must... Uh, we, we must say that, that, that we cannot have government. The government is inherently wrong. And, and that's not true either. And, and this is why I'm ready. I'm going to, I'm going to like piss off all my friends in the anarchist community. Yes. Anarchists have an anarchist community. It's like a collective, but anarchist, right? Uh, yeah. So no, I'm, I, I've identified as an anarchist in the past because I was in that reactionary phase of learning that governments are rackets like this and learning that they were responsible for me seeing buddies of mine die in Iraq for lies. So yeah, there, there's, there's an emotional component to this as well, but every, every, you know, anarchist I know uh, is either being dishonest or emotionally driven rather than intellectually driven uh, or, or they're doing this libertarian macho flash. This was a thing in the 80s. Like, I'm so libertarian. I believe that we should end all welfare immediately. I'm so libertarian that I think all drugs should be legal. I'm so libertarian that I'm an anarchist and governments shouldn't exist. And you go, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm. Hmm. If you're saying that people can't have governments and you're an anarchist, guess what? You're just as bad as the statists. You're a central planner. You're a controller. You, you want to deny people the freedom to form voluntary governments that are ethical. So I'm not an anarchist. I'm a voluntarist. I'm a libertarian. I believe that if you're going to have a government, it has to be voluntary. It has to be ethical, right? Now, that's not what we have today. I mean, I guess you could say student body government is a kind of voluntary government. But obviously, that's not what we're talking about. But if you say to me, 
well, Adam, I'm an anarchist because what you're saying is impossible. There's no such thing as a voluntary government anywhere in the world. It's impossible by definition. Oh, so you're the word police now? I can't use the word government differently because you have assigned your definition to it? That's not really how words work. Sorry, anarchists. But in my case, I can actually provide you an exact immediate example of a voluntary government that, yes, is a territorial uh, monopoly on the use of force, uh, but based entirely in property rights. I'm talking, of course, about my government here in Gardenia, where I am the government, and it's because this is a constitutional propertarian monarchy. Yeah, I own this land, declared it to be sovereign, and said, I'm the king, we are sovereign. Now, technically, we declared the intent, the process is going to be completed on, on July 4th, I know, just a coincidence, next year. But uh, I am, I'm still, uh, you know, I guess, a, an interim transitionary government. And here it's voluntary. I, I protect my property. Uh, I respect the property rights and, and self-ownership of other people. So back to this definition of government. If you're talking about an organization, uh, a means by which organizational policies are, are enforced, well, at the moment those policies are unethical, your entire institution is unethical, right? Because you're saying that we are going to enforce policies that violate individual rights. They're unethical. By definition, that's what makes them unethical is that you're violating someone's self-ownership. So we go, we go now to the history. And this is really awesome that like Wikipedia actually there's some some great contributor to Wikipedia has decided to write a history of government section. Now, this is really cool how it starts because this is like exactly what I wrote in the book, Freedom, right? The moment and place that the phenomenon of human government developed is lost in time. However, history does record the formations of early governments about 5,000 years ago, the first small city states appeared. By the third to second millenniums BC, some of these had developed into larger governed areas. Sumer, ancient Egypt, the Indus Valley civilization, and the Yellow River civilization. The development of agriculture and water control projects were a catalyst for the development of governments. On occasion, a chief of a tribe was elected by various rituals or tests of strength to govern his tribe, sometimes with a group of elder tribesmen as a council. The human ability to precisely communicate abstract, learn information allowed humans to become ever more effective at agriculture, and that allowed for ever-increasing population density. David Christian explains how this resulted in states with laws and governments. As farming populations gathered in larger and denser communities, interactions between different groups increased, and the social pressure rose until, in a striking parallel with star formation, new structures suddenly appeared, together with a new level of complexity. Like stars, cities and states reorganized, and energize the smaller objects within their gravitational field. Now, this is a really dangerous view of human history based on modern government propaganda, which would have you believe that governments are just benign and loving, and they only want to control you and force their will on you because they love you so much, and it's, it's all for your own good. So was it as farming populations gathered that social pressure rose to create governments? I don't think that's really accurate. I mean, if we look at what governments are and what they have become, a more accurate view of, of human history and the formation of governments would be, well, let's put it this way. Why would you want to control other human beings? To serve your own interest, right? I mean, you're not, I'm not trying to control you for your own good. I mean, I guess it's like, if you're if you're a, a cat stuck in a net and I'm, I need to control you so you stop flying at me and free you from the net, okay, maybe that's maybe that's one thing. But that's not what governments are doing because they've been around long enough. And guess what? We're still not anywhere near free. So why would people do this? And if you if you really look back not into the history of of written history of governments, but anthropology and and, and sort of a more natural history of, of humankind, what you see is that systems of societal organization based on control and exploitation came to rise not when populations got dense yeah there's a coincidence in timing here but more importantly when humans became worthy 
of exploitation. So Christian is correct here to point out the importance of the rise of agriculture, right? Because when human beings are, are basically all hunters and gatherers, what's the point of exploiting someone? What's the point? I mean, yeah, you can, you can kill someone if they're competing with you. You can steal from them. But, but why try to, to govern them, like to control them in an ongoing way? Like there's no benefit to you if, if we're all just dispersed hunter-gatherer tribes. But then you go, well, to the leader of a tribe who wants to, I don't know, fuck all the women. There's a, well, I can pick up the biggest rock, so I'm in charge now kind of mentality, right? And by the way, most of us got here because at some point, someone in our ancestry said, I can pick up the biggest rock and screw you. I want to fuck all the women. Yeah, yeah. People say rape and murder are unnatural. No, they're not. They're very natural and a big part of how we all got here, whether you like it or not. Fortunately, we can evolve past nature, right? We can evolve past this concept of government exploitation as well, which is a, a kind of murder and rape of our freedom, if I may use those words inappropriately, right? So what we have when we look at history uh, of government in an honest way, we see the development of exploitation rackets. And I go, Adam, Adam, racket? What is a racket? Why are you using this? Or, well, hey. We got it pulled up on Wikipedia already, and it's racketeering. A racket, according to the current common and most general definition, is an organized criminal act or activity in which the criminal act or activity is some form of substantial business or a way to earn illegal money either regularly or briefly, but repeatedly. A racket is therefore generally a repeated or continuous organized criminal operation or enterprise. Conducting a racket is racketeering. Now, Back to the concept of government as enforcing its policy, right? If you can't leave, then you go, well, this is definitely a, a, a criminal organization that is imprisoning you or preventing you from just enjoying basic freedom of movement. But what if it gives you permission in these porous government borders? Well, you can leave, but in the United States, not with more than $10,000. Oh, you can leave. But guess what? We never really uh, respected your property rights. We still don't. If you don't give us a chunk of your money, you can't leave. Your... So it's a prison, but one that you can buy your way out of. Sounds like a regular prison to me. And when you've got people in a prison like the USSA, you can really employ some other dangerous exploitation mechanisms in order to take advantage of and exploit people. So let's, let's so just to this uh, definition of racket, let's pick this apart. Is, is government a racket? Uh, an organized criminal act or activity. Now, is it criminal? Oh, is government crook? Name a government anywhere on earth today, a, a state type government that isn't doing something criminal. And, and it's tempting to say that that makes anything called government criminal by definition, but, you know, that's that's obviously not the case because an exception proves that your definition doesn't hold true as the government of Gardenia proved. But when we talk about an organized criminal act or activity, uh, when we talk about governance, we're, we're talking about taxation. And, and you know, if, if they say that it's legal, that doesn't make it okay, right? I mean, if a government can say, well, we call this taxes and we call ourselves a government. So it's not that, therefore it's okay. Well, then any band of robbers, as Lysander Spooner would have pointed out, can simply declare their, themselves a government and then everything they're doing is legal, right? So obviously something, it, it, when, when we're using the, the term legal here to determine whether something is a racket or not, we have to have a different, a different definition of legal rather than, well, if government said it's okay, so it must be okay because it's legal. No, we're talking about legal in terms of the natural law, which is based on morality, ethics, self-ownership. If you don't, if you're not familiar, look up the concept natural law. And again, it's wrong to murder, to hit, to steal. All of these things that you know inherently to be wrong are wrong under the natural law, even when they're not wrong or protected by government. You think I'm crazy here? No. If you murder an individual, the government will punish you for it, yes. But if you murder an individual with government permission, either in the line of duty as a cop or a soldier or an FBI agent or CIA spy or whatever the case may be, well, no, 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 we say murder is okay in those cases, right? Now, 
a way, so criminal activity is some form of substantial business. Oh, yes, government is a substantial business or a way to earn illegal money either regularly or briefly but repeatedly. Uh, well, certainly government is a substantial business that is able to make money repeatedly through criminal activity. A racket is therefore generally repeated or continuous organized criminal operation or enterprise conducting a racket is racketeering. And that's what every government around the world is doing. Now, Adam, I, I know, uh, you're probably going, Adam, but you, you, you said taxation. You know, like if, if what about what about taxation is theft? Well, according to Wikipedia, yeah, let's go back to some good sources here. Theft is the taking of another person's property or services without that person's permission or consent with the intent to deprive the rightful owner of it. Reminds me of what I think of liberals, right? You're all about consent until it comes to taxes and vaccines. Well, I don't consent to giving you a portion of my labor, my income, and for the average working American today, it's 50%. When you add it all up, yes, the average working American is working for government half the year. It's not just the taxes they take out of your paycheck. They want you to think that's all you're paying, but you know, sales taxes, all the manufacturing costs that are that are taxes that are included in your costs, your prices at the, at when you pay for things, all of the fees, fines, other regulations that lead you to paying more. Yeah, you're working for government about half the year. Did you consent to that? I didn't. Social contracts, <laughs> as Lysander, Lysander would also say, social contract. I didn't sign shit. And here's the thing. If you say, well, there's a contract. Well, you don't get to force a contract on someone. I can't write up a contract and put your name on it and say, look, see, there's a contract. You have to abide by the contract. No, that doesn't work. Which gets us back to, you know, just using honest language. And I've said this a number of times, and I, and I think it's extremely important to repeat in order to get past this illusion of what, today's governments want you to think that they are. The Dalai Lama was asked, what was the first thing you would do if you were president? And he said, I would start calling things by their real names. Well, here's how I would start. Police are criminals. War is murder. Taxation is theft. And government, as we know it today, until it transitions to something voluntary, which we can make it do. How? Opt out, localize, declare your independence as an individual, as a community. Anything you can do as an agorist, that is to materially withdraw your support of government, to withdraw your consent from everything that they have fooled you into giving it for. We can end this racket. Government is a racket. For how long? 